to school, to wait for work. Rush out of the house, jump in the car, turn the ignition, and you go, uh, uh, uh. Turn it again. Uh, uh, uh. Now what do you do? Reach into your pocket, you pull your phone out, and you call for help. Now who do you call? So Google says there is a great towing service that is on the way right now to help you. This towing service, Hook'em, Cheat'em, and How, is coming to get you guys started. So right now they pull up, they have done tons of research in the proper way to do this, the safest way to do this. I'm going to have a demonstration as Mr. Hook'em of Hook'em, Cheat'em, and How is going to get your car started. Let's meet Mr. Hook'em. So how many of you drove here today? Yeah. No one walked? Oh, you walked? Yes. Oh, good man, good man. Don't we depend on these cars? And what happens when they don't start? I mean, isn't it kind of scary when your car doesn't start? What do you do? Now, you could call AAA, as George has done, but I want to talk about what you can do while you're waiting for these guys to show up. We are going to talk about why. According to AAA, a dead battery is about 80% of the non-start calls. Sometimes they're out of gas. Sometimes they get calls for a car that won't start, and it's not their car. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed. It's one of the opportunities and challenges. But this does happen. This will happen to you, and today I'd like to help you work through the process. So let's, the first thing to do is find your battery. How many know where their battery is in their car? Okay. You know, they're located in a variety of places. Some are under the hood, and they're hidden underneath some black covers so you can't see the wonderful battery that's there. Some of them, they're under the seat. The, the major reason why batteries fail is heat. And so some auto manufacturers put them under the seat because it's cooler than being under the hood. What happens if it's neither place? Well, I hate to tell you this. You could Google it, but I found out that when my car doesn't start, OnStar doesn't work. And also, my cell doesn't work either because I'm in a place with no cell service. So get out the book. Find this book and know where it's at, because it will tell you where your battery is. And so once you found the battery, what to do about it? AAA tells us that most of the time that your battery doesn't help your car start, there's a problem with either age of the battery or the connections. Now, how many of you carry a full tool case with you? Do you have a full tool kit in your car? Why not, Jay? Oh. Well, guess what? You do have a tool case. You have a shoe. And once you found the battery and found the shoe, you can tell in the handyman, the family how to do it book, that there's a shoe. So take your shoe, you found the battery, tap the shoe hard on the battery. Now the batteries are pretty solid, so they can handle that. Your shoe eh, might not be so good. Do it a few times. Any other electrical connection you can find, do that. You know, and actually, you probably had this battery for more than three years. Maybe one whack on the head to remind yourself why you didn't put a new battery in your car. Okay, so next, try it. Turn the switch and the car goes, uh -huh. well, that's a little better, but it's not running. What to do next? There's several different solutions. These guys have not shown up yet. I would recommend find a friend and have another friend help you jump the car. Now there's a couple of safety things that I have to warn you about. First, bring the vehicles close enough that you can find some jumper cables and you can go from one vehicle to the other. Next, once you've found those cables, see the red 
See the black? Anybody in here colorblind? Good. So everybody can tell that this is red and this is black. This is important to know. The red cable is your friend. After you've gotten your two cars together, take the red cable and hook it to the red terminal. Oh, wait, I don't have red terminal. Hook it to the plus terminal. Hook it solidly. Do this to both vehicles. First thing to do. Then, for safety purposes, and once both are hooked up to the donor vehicle, but that's the car that's running, hook up both cables. Have them hooked up like this. To the donor vehicle, not your car that's not starting. Why? Well, guess what? These little jewels, they work on an acid mixture. And when that acid mixture gets all excited, sometimes these little suckers blow up. And you don't want to be making that connection. So the connection you want to do from the source vehicle, you want to hook like this. But to your vehicle, the one that you're jumping, hook this to something that's bright and shiny. Okay, next step, start the donor vehicle. Start the car that you can already start. Don't let it run, let it go. You know, maybe this is a good time to, if your Google's working, to find a place that sells batteries. Uh, we'll get that set next time. So after it's done, try to start it. Crank it for three to five minutes, no more, no less. And if the car starts, Say yay! Disconnect the red cables first, and then the black cables, and drive away. If it doesn't start, wait another three to five minutes and do it again. Okay, so now your car's running. We're done. Things are going right. It's good. Now, do you feel confident that you could jump a car? Could you tell when the car's not starting because it's electrical? Can you, once you do it, can you find the battery, attack the battery and run with the connections, and then actually do the jump start? Yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The job's not done. One last thing. If the batteries let you down once, trust that battery never more. And the next thing to do is find a battery and get that battery replaced. So this is what you do when your car won't start. It's your Toastmaster, or Madden.